Hey people, it is Wednesday, May the 24th. Time is 3.58 in the afternoon. It's currently 17 degrees Celsius. And I am on College Street at the sort of western end of Little Italy. And I'm going to walk from here through the rest of Little Italy along College Street. Making a couple of little stops along the way. I thought I'd go down a bit of a nostalgia tour. I'm going to walk past my sister's old house, which is just up ahead at Crawford, just a bit north of College. And then I'm going to continue on west along College. And then I'll take a peek at my girlfriend Megan's old apartment that she used to have there on Margareta Street. And from there I'll continue on to Sterling Road and we'll take a walk north up Sterling Road which is an interesting industrial area that is transforming with some new developments including the new Museum of Contemporary Art. I don't think I've done a proper walk along Sterling Road before. And it's a rather breezy day. So here's College in Crawford. So I'm just going to take that little detour and we'll swing by my sister's old house. When I first moved to Toronto in 2010, the house up ahead is where she lived at the time and I stayed with her for a while while I was sort of figuring out my plan of action for my eventual relocation to Toronto. So I spent a lot of time in this neighborhood familiarizing myself with with this part of the city. Eventually I did move to the east side. And then my sister eventually moved away from this house up ahead to another house not too far away. But she did live here for a good 10 years or so. I'm just guessing off the top of my head. Quite a while. And I can see it right up ahead. It's sort of sitting on the little corner of sorts where Crawford and Montrose split off from one another. And there it is right there. Had a lot of good times in that house. Yeah, it looks the same. All surrounded by hedges and whatnot. <laughs> get a better look at more of the house. All right. That's one trip down memory road. Now we'll make our way over one block and back down to college again and I'll continue heading west. We're going to check out Megan's old apartment. 
I have no idea what's happening there. <laughs> Sounded rather dramatic, whatever it was. All right, so here's Shaw Street. We'll take this back down to college. so bright out here it's hard for me to even see the view screen on my camera oh, nice old homes oh, lots of these side streets around here Back to college. All right, so Little Italy continues on for a little further along here, but then it eventually ends and we get a bit of the northern side of Little Portugal after that. Most of Little Portugal lies to the south of here, mainly along Dundas as its main commercial strip. But they do sort of blend together, the two neighborhoods around this area. Yeah. location of the sun right now makes it almost impossible to walk on a shady side because both sides of the street are completely bathed in sunlight. I know that at this time of day walking west doesn't result in quite the best video. Things tend to look a bit murky.
comes across the Ossington Avenue. The Ossington Strip is further south. Popular restaurant and bar area. When Megan did live in this area, I found myself doing quite a few videos along this stretch of College Street as I would make my way back and forth from my place to hers. And I thought, well, why not record a video? I might have done it a few too many times. But I tried to mix up the time of day and things of that nature, rainfall, snowfall. So I think we've transitioned out of Little Italy after crossing Ossington. There's not a cloud in the sky, so the sun is just at full force right now. Alright, Dovercourt Road. And there's the famous Club Matador there. It's a popular night spot. I think Leonard Cohen recorded one of his music videos at that club for the song Closing Time. Last I heard, there's a redevelopment proposed for that site that will basically tear down the building, but just retain the old sign and tack it onto the front of the new residential building. There hasn't been anything going on in the Matador for years. It's been vacant for quite a long time now. And this section of college has always been a little bit on the quiet side here. There's not much in the way of 
retail and restaurants. It does pick up a bit again though, further west. Very nice old apartment buildings here. Another awesome old apartment. I'm just going to cross against the light here. We're getting some shade finally thanks to all the mature trees along this part of the street. And the 506 Carlton heading to High Park. Dufferin Street. It's a major north-south arterial, arterial street. I don't know why that's so hard to say.
Nice selection of shops and restaurants again. Still a little less lively than further east though. This is where there's sort of an overlap where little Portugal sort of comes up to this section of College Street. Dundas and College run parallel for most of their length, but at this far western end, they start to sort of converge together gradually until they meet up with one another around Lansdowne Avenue. So right now, Dundas is just maybe like no more than a five minute walk to the south of here. Eventually, we'll run right into Dundas as it merges with College. But College Street ends at that point and Dundas continues on. So Dundas is the winner. <laughs> College Street ceases to exist. Brock Avenue. So we're almost at Margareta Street now, which is where Megan's old apartment is. From my many walks back and forth, between my place and here, when she lived here. I got the walk down to about an even hour if I walked at a brisk pace. Which is pretty good walk in my opinion. I think that's just the right length to feel like you had a walk. All right, here's Margareta Street. So we'll just take a quick peek. Her old apartment is just a few spots up the street here, heading north. Here it is. That big window there was actually her bedroom window. And after she moved away, she left her little elephant statue on the porch. So I remember I did a live stream one night where I came to reclaim the elephant to get it back to her. That was sort of a fun mission for a live stream. So now she has the elephant statue back with her in Guelph. I think we named the elephant Etta. Etta the elephant. Alright, 
back on to college. So now Dundas is just one block south from here, and pretty soon Dundas will literally merge with college. Two bucks for a car wash? That sounds like a pretty good deal. I don't know anything about car washes or how much they should cost. All right now here's Lansdowne Avenue. Let's see if we can get a nice look straight down college you can make you can make out all the way to Young Street where the tall buildings are and Young Street is where College Street ends in that direction once it crosses Young the name changes the street continues on but with a different name it becomes Carlton Street on this end though, College Street just ends and Dundas Street continues. So there's Dundas right there. And that's it. From this point on, we're on Dundas Street. See the CN Tower off in the distance. Passing over the rail corridor. And here's Sterling Road. So this is where we're going to start heading north. So I won't be walking towards that 
glaring sun. Hopefully from this point on the picture will brighten up a little bit. So I've never recorded a walkthrough here before. I have walked along the West Toronto Rail Path, which is just a little bit further west. But not along Sterling Road itself. I did pass through part of this area in a live stream once though. Not the complete stretch. So that sort of tall, tallish old building up ahead was a derelict building for many years, all abandoned and covered with graffiti, but it's been all fixed up and brought back to life and now houses the Museum of Contemporary Art. And for those who are familiar with the cover photo for my YouTube channel, which is a picture of Batman <laughs> looking at the bat signal with the Toronto skyline at night, that photo was taken from on top of the old building up ahead. Back when it was an abandoned building, I guess a local photographer went up there and snapped some pics. And it smells like chocolate all around here too because there is a chocolate factory close by. The Nestle Chocolate Factory. I think this is it right now, actually, that we're walking past. So the air literally smells like chocolate bars. You can see over there some of the brands that they make here. Kit Kat, Arrow, Coffee Crisp, and Smarties. I'm a fan of Kit Kat, Arrow, and Coffee Crisp. Not so much Smarties. It smells delicious here. Quite the huge facility here. And these are some new developments here. These new structures are entirely made out of wood. There's a number of new mid-rise all wood buildings that have been going up in the city over the last several years. Some along the waterfront on Queens Quay as well. I heard there are plans to construct an even taller all-wood building in the city that will be a full-fledged high-rise. Okay. 
interesting area here and here is the old building I think it was called the auto building and there you can see the sign Museum of Contemporary Art Surprising amount of traffic coming through here. I have a feeling many people use this street as a shortcut. So we got some like coffee shops in the area. And a new building rising here. See if I can get up to the top of that building sometime. I'm not sure if it's accessible or not. Probably get some fantastic skyline shots from there. Obviously, this area is a bit of a work in progress. Kind of part industrial, part residential. Lots of worn out looking asphalt and gravelly areas. So we're still on Sterling Road here. It's a nice dense old housing here. Cool view with the old auto building kind of towering off in the distance. These areas definitely give Toronto more of that sort of 
northeastern U.S. city kind of look. Which sort of makes sense because I think those are the cities that Toronto is more closely located to than the Midwestern cities. It also has a bit of a old British look to it in spots too, which also makes sense. Like an old British industrial city, just around here specifically. And we've emerged onto Bloor Street. heading back east again but I think I'm going to start to wrap up this walk here on Bloor Street. I hope you enjoyed the sort of nostalgia tour <laughs> starting in Little Italy where I walked past my sister's old house and then we continued on College Street, walked past Megan's old apartment and now we found ourselves on Bloor Street after walking along Sterling Road to a very interesting industrial area that is rapidly transforming into something brand new. Are you here now? What's that? Uh, no. Nope. <laughs> that woman was afraid that I caught her on camera. I probably did, but those are the brakes. <laughs> So anyway, leave a comment down below if you enjoyed the walk. And be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And also make sure you hit that notification bell. That way you won't miss any of my videos. And if you'd like to support the channel, there are links in the description where you can do so via PayPal as well as via my merch store. And there's also a super thanks button right down below if that's how you'd like to support the channel. And you can find me on Instagram under K Continuum. So thanks for watching and be sure to keep checking back because as always, I will continue, or will I? Sidewalk closed. Maybe I won't continue. <laughs>